Wow, Mom. Thanks for letting me play this game. None of the other kids at school were allowed to play this one. You're the best mom ever. Sure, honey. You can play any game you want. <laughs> hey, honey, did your friends mention that the new Mortal Kombat movie is out? What? There's another movie out? I saw the first one on TV one time. Who's okay? I'll take you to see it if you want. You'll take me to see it? You're the best mom ever. Mortal Kombat Annihilation, one of the worst sequels ever made. The first one wasn't even really all that great either. It was the first movie directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, and some still say it might be his best movie. Mortal Kombat Annihilation makes that movie look like a bona fide classic. This movie features some of the worst special effects ever put to screen, and some of the most idiotic fight scenes I've ever seen. It is one of the most hilariously bad movies ever made. It is truly a hilariosity, a movie that is such an atrocity, it's hilarious. So let's talk about it today on my hilariosity review of Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It's okay. It's okay. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I didn't miss about anything! Not what? Not what time? Mortal Kombat Annihilation. This is a film that actually made us miss Paul W.S. Anderson. A rare feat. This movie came out in 1997, and I can tell you even at its release date, we were sitting in that theater going, what is with these horrible special effects? They looked just as bad when that movie first came out. It was absurd. It looked like a Beast Wars television show. I used to watch Beast Wars, but that was a TV show, Saturday mornings for children. This was a feature film. <laughs> these special effects are like Superman 4, A Quest for Peace. And this movie came out 10 years after Superman 4 did. I mean, there are moments in this movie where you can literally see a white outline around the bodies of these people on these green screens. It's absurdly awful. So one of the things I'm gonna be doing in this hilariosity review is a flip count. That's right, there is an absurd amount of back flips and front flips and side flips in this movie. And you're watching it and you're like, wow, I think on the application for this movie, it just said, hey, can you do a flip any way ever? Yes, I can. You are hired. At the end of this video, I'm gonna count down how many actual flips are in this movie. And I will tell you because it's pretty awesome. So the movie starts out and there really is no point and talking about a plot too much during this video because the plot of this movie isn't really there. It's just like a whole bunch of people kind of say things and then they fight. But the movie opens pretty much immediately with one of the best lines in the movie where the character that I'm gonna refer to as the Bride of Frankenstein says, Too bad you will die. Too bad you are in this movie. So all these people start fighting and you're like, who are these people again? Because if you didn't see the first movie like the day before, you have no idea what's going on because these characters are like so huge and look at me, I am the most ultimate leader of Mortal Kombat characters. Uh, let's all fight and have an army of ninjas. Remember that army of ninjas. Remember them. I will get to that soon. As long as the portal remains open, your world becomes my world. <laughs> okay, so we don't know what's going on. Let's talk about the actual fight choreography, right? Because really the only reason anyone watches a movie like Mortal Kombat Annihilation is to see some cool fights, right? Every single stunt in this movie feels faked and every single shot feels cut at the most crucial moment in which possible harm may be done to one of these actors, and the shot is then turned to fake a stunt in the worst way. That's the best way I can describe the majority of the fights in this movie. They're all completely emotionless, some of them very slow, and they're cut at just the right moment before a stunt double might actually have to do something difficult. So Johnny Cage gets killed and Shao Kahn declares the earth is gonna be destroyed in six days. Why six days? I guess to give them time to prepare because why else would you destroy the earth other than to give your opponent six days to train and figure out a way to make you not be able to destroy the earth. 
That's just what evil people do. They allow people time to train and... So they kind of take their time as they flee from his army of ninjas. Yeah, they're just kind of going about their day. They're just kind of taking a nice little jog. They're not really that worried about dying. Then Raiden suddenly shoots lightning from his hand at them and it like crushes a wall and they can't get through. So wait, you can shoot lightning from your hands? Why didn't you just electrocute his entire army of ninjas when they were running at you? That might have been a good idea. So now we see that Shao Kahn is actually the shapeshifter from the X-Files. We get a dialogue scene. It's not important. It's a time waster. All I'm saying about these dialogue scenes is that they're filler. That's all they are. It's like the creators of this movie were like, okay, look, we're gonna have a whole bunch of fight scenes, right? But we have to have this movie be at least like 90 minutes long. So we'll just put some of those, those talking scenes in between, you know, where people say things from their mouth and then we'll put them in between the fight scenes. And none of it seems to make sense. So Liu Kang and Katana are walking somewhere. We don't really know where they're walking. It's some film set and they're being filmed. That's all I know. They're about to kiss, but Meta Predator gets in the way and they have to fight this guy. Now yes, I know this guy's a Mortal Kombat character, but I don't care. He's Meta Predator for this video. So Sub-Zero saves them, but apparently it's not Sub-Zero, it's Sub-Zero's brother who resembles Nicolas Cage. I just thought this movie would be better with me in it. Do you have any bunnies around? I tried to put on my bear suit, but it didn't fit today. So I'm wearing this blue outfit. Do you guys like it? I like it too. So Scorpion appears and he says, get over here, in a desperate attempt to make fans actually like this movie. So Liu Kang does one of his magical flips. That happens a lot in this movie where he just does this flip and just somehow catapults himself forward in time. I don't know how he does that, but if he could do that, why'd they need Sub-Zero to make a bridge for him if he can just backflip across the entire thing with his magic? So Scorpion steals Katana and says, Suckers! This is a Looney Tunes episode. So Raiden and Sonya Blade notice this happening on Earth. So I guess the two realms are combining, destroying Earth. Where is humanity throughout this entire thing? You never once see humanity during this movie. You just see monuments and landmarks that resemble things you may know from like New York or Paris. There's no time in this movie where you actually feel any type of fear at all for humans because you never see humans. You never see a person going, oh my god, there's a giant thing in the sky. Never once. Just like six Mortal Kombat characters and you're supposed to care about Earth for some reason because we live on Earth. So Sonya finds Jax, he has these metal arms and she tells him about the destruction of Earth and all this stuff. How am I supposed to follow this plot? I played the games when I was a kid and I don't know what any of this incoherent crap is doing. A lot of this movie looks like they were trying to make it be in 3D with things just popping out and everything. Like they actually were trying to make a three dimensional movie without the 3D glasses. I mean, every single shot in this fight is just so horribly done. Throughout the entire movie, the fights look awful. There's this shot in this fight where he's supposed to be breaking the glass with his hands, but you don't even see him make contact with it because as I said, they cut the shot right before the difficult thing takes place. That's what they do throughout this movie. Watch it and you'll understand. Throughout this fight, Sonya seems absolutely invincible. She can hit everything, no one hits her. Jax can't do a damn thing. And when he finally hits somebody, we are reminded that these fictional, butt-kicking, fantasy characters use street insults. Yeah, <laughs> but then the body leaves a self-destruct explosion that is imminent. What does that remind you of? <laughs> look at that explosion though! Oh my gosh, just look at that! I think that's the best thing I've ever seen in my life! That is the worst green screen imaginable! No, as I said, I know these Mortal Kombat characters, I know their names, but these two guys are gonna be known as Spider Woman and Goat Boy for this video. That's what I'm gonna call them. And they have the argument scene, and this happens. <laughs> <laughs> show that again, please, show it again. Oh, that's the best thing I've seen all day. So of course this guy Shao Kahn is the now cliched villain who kills members of his own army. Darth Vader did it, but it was great because that movie had depth and interesting characters and you actually understood why this guy was so mad. Shao Kahn, what is this guy? He's just a cliched villain. Who would want to serve on his army? You mess up once, you die. <laughs> So then we cut to Liu Kang on a desert and you're like, oh my gosh, are they actually filming on a real location? Don't worry, two shots later, you're back on some shitty set. So then something pops out at him and you're like, what is that? And then this is what they do, okay? This is their filmmaking technique. This is one of the parts in this movie that I can't believe happened. 
Because look, I can understand crappy green screen. You just can't afford it. I can understand bad acting and bad writing. They don't have the talent, they didn't have the screenplay. I can understand bad directing. But not so far as this shot. He's holding on to the camera, going like this with the camera. And that's supposed to be him fighting with whatever is on him. That's how they decided to film it. Let's have him fight with the camera in really crappy slow motion, slow frame rate. And that will look awesome, right? No. So the Indian in the cupboard shows up, and uh, I should probably clarify that joke, I guess. It's the actor from the movie The Indian in the Cupboard. His name is Lightfoot. Okay, back to the review. He tells Liu Kang that he needs to learn what his animality is so that he can defeat Shao Kahn. Whoop did he do? Thanks for the plot exposition. He knocks out Liu Kang, and then we get a drug-induced acid trip in which all of his friends insult him. There are 15 people in this house, and you're the only one who has to make trouble. Look what you did, you little jerk. Kevin, you are such a disease. Kevin, I'm going to feed you to my tarantula. So some chick named Jade visits him in the snow? What the hell is this? I guess he has to go through like three challenges. The penitent man will pass. The penitent man will pass. Yeah, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Another movie this is trying to rip off. So then we get another fight scene with the fakest rock ever. I mean, look at that. Are they even trying? Are they even trying? So then we cut to Raiden and he's walking around the desert with his arms out and he's looking all holy and everything. And you know what it reminds me of? A Britney Spears music video. I'm not So he has to ask the gods three questions. He only gets three questions. What if something like really bad was going on and you couldn't cover it in three questions? Like, I don't know, maybe the earth being destroyed? So the four of them meet up and Sonya is mad for some reason? What's she mad about? I don't understand. I mean, yeah, the earth is being destroyed, but she seems very upset at Liu Kang and them and she doesn't even know why. She's just supposed to be upset because more than likely in the screenplay it said, Sonya, angry in parentheses and then her line <laughs> what's she angry about but don't worry because Raiden is back and he enters with a magical backflip never give up hope so as Raiden opens a portal to their world we see Shao Kahn with his humongous army and Bride of Frankenstein of course now remember that army Remember it. Raiden and the rest of the Mortal Kombat crew get into their world safely where everything is purple. There's landmarks all over the place from the Earth. As I said, that's the only way we know that humanity's in trouble. We see uh, the Eiffel Tower. That's how we know that, that we're in trouble. So everyone starts fighting in the giant climactic Mortal Kombat Annihilation fight that we were waiting for. And then there's a dodge kicking fight because that's apparently how two people make progress as they're fighting is continuously dodge each other by kicking back and forth over and over again. So suddenly the Bride of Frankenstein is dead and it's so obvious that Jade is evil in hiding. I mean, you'd have to be an idiot not to notice this. It's the most obvious thing like, yeah, you're obviously bad. Just. Turn bad already so we can move on with the plot, please. So Liu Kang finds Katana, she's all trapped and everything, and then a crazy monster guy swings in and she's like, it's a trap, leave. You think that maybe you should have said that before the crazy monster guy swung in? So Liu Kang fights this monster guy on top of this thing and look how slow and emotionless this fight is. Eh, mm, 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 mm. So Spider-Woman whips Raiden with her hair. <laughs> and then the obvious twist with Jade is revealed. And now she has Vulcan eyebrows because she is evil now. So due to budget constraints, Spider-Woman dies very abruptly. You think I'm joking? That's actually true. Yeah, she gets crushed by something because they couldn't afford to animate her arms anymore. If you think I'm joking, I'm not, that's actually what it is. So now we get more pointless drivel BS where plot points get revealed. Shao Kahn is my brother. Oh my gosh, they're brothers. I don't care at all. 
end credits happen already. So a giant burping creature eats Jade. And again, how much does it suck to work for this guy? He kills everyone on his side. So apparently the only way that Liu Kang can defeat Shao Kahn is if he just fights him by himself. Why can't they all team up on him? Why can't they all just help? Oh, because there's more people. There's still Goat Boy. Dang, Goat Boy. And then the, the fight happens and all... People are fighting. It's a movie. So Shao Kahn blasts Raiden once, and then he's like, I win, brother. Really? What, do you got the gold PP7 from GoldenEye64? What, do you got the one-shot kill? What is this thing? One hit? Kills this guy? But then we get the animality scene. Yeah, because Liu Kang has to remember his animality, remember that? They turn into these creatures that looks like I created it on a Macintosh in 1992 in elementary school when I was like, hey, look at this program I can make. Oh, cool. I can make little shapes and features. Wow. Hey, look, teacher, I can make little shapes and features. That's great. Wow, Chris, you should become a special effects designer for a movie about five years from now, and then you can end your career because your special effects suck. You get an A plus today. So now that they've finally killed all the other characters, they simply watch Liu Kang as he fights Shao Kahn without helping at all. You know, it is entirely possible that the added advantage of more people fighting your enemy would assist. But they don't. They just watch. Now look, I've been saying something for a while that I would get to a certain point, and here it is. Where is his army? Where are the ninjas from the beginning of the movie? Where's the army that was with him in the desert? They're never seen or heard from again. They have nothing to do with the battle. They were just there to be an army and then they didn't do anything. There's even a scene where he's instructing his army like the end is coming and we're going to win and blah, blah, blah. The army never shows up. Why? I don't know. Budget constraints, probably. Because that's what this entire movie has against it is budget constraints. So eventually Liu Kang and Shao Kahn fall down and they're magically people again. They're no longer their animality form because more than likely the budget ran out for that type of special effect that I made in the Macintosh in 1992. Okay, I'm done. So the two magical old people appear. I guess they're the gods or whatever and they declare mortal combat between Shao Kahn and Liu Kang. I guess that whole finding your animality thing had nothing to do with anything and actually didn't help at all. It was just, hey, look at these special effects we made. <laughs> Shao Kahn gets knocked down, but then he screams, no, before Liu Kang defeats him. How is this a victory if this evil guy who wants to destroy the planet is still alive, I don't really understand, actually. Then his father gets trapped in the Phantom Zone from Superman. Then all these flashes happen and we get some footage of the landmarks that were coming through the realms being just fine. But you can tell that it's something called stock footage. In other words, somewhere in a computer somewhere, someone had a shot of the Golden Gate Bridge, someone had a shot of Paris, and they're like, let's just put this in the movie. And you can so tell that it's just stock footage. It's so sad. They couldn't even go and take a... Again, where was the damn army? <sighs> the army. <sighs> so everyone just gets instantly and conveniently zapped back to Earth. Bride of Frankenstein's okay now. Raiden's a god. Why did the gods lie to him? Because he seems to be thinking the gods lied to him. Why did that happen? None of it really matters because... It's a movie where people are supposed to fight and have techno music and the fight scenes don't even work. So they all smile about it and walk away. That's the ending of this movie. That's the ending of this movie? They smile about it and walk away? I just turned into very angry Yoda. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Alright, so as I promised at the beginning of this video, I was going to do a flip count. There's a lot of flips in this movie, trust me. You want to know how many there are? 54. 54 back flips, front flips, side flips, whatever flips. There's 54 of them. That's all they had to offer this movie was a whole bunch of flips. Mortal Kombat Annihilation is a joke. It is a movie that is so bad that it is good. And you can watch it with your friends and enjoy yourselves because it's just so incredible that a movie like this actually gets made and was put into theaters and fans went and saw it and were like, At least that was my reaction. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much as always for watching my hilariosity reviews. 
I'll be back very soon with more of them. I'm really enjoying doing this, and I'm glad you guys are too. Thanks as always for watching, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.